Hey guys, Veronica here. I'm back in the forest today and I am here to check my IMO collections and see how this is progressing. Now, I set these up on Monday and it's Saturday, so I'm hoping that I didn't let them go too long, but part of the reason I waited was because it's been so rainy and a little bit cold here. Um, it just made more sense to me, at least in my head, to wait and give them enough time and not disturb them. So we're gonna see what's under these lids. I put these lids down after we were done shooting earlier in the week so that um, I could make sure we didn't get a lot of rain and stuff into the baskets. You wanna make sure that your collection, if you're doing it, stays as dry as possible beyond like the amount of water that you cooked it with. But I don't know what's under here yet. It could be mold, it could be ants, there could be snakes. Like, we're gonna find out together because that's the fun of documenting it, right? So um, I'm gonna take the weights off. Well, I guess we'll do the small one first since that one may be a little testier. But basically, I'm seeing um, a decent amount of activity as far as the leaf molds that are on top. So that's a good sign. And then we are going to pull them out. No snakes in this one, also good. And you can see there's, oh man. So there's like fungal threads and maybe a little mold or something here on the bottom of this basket. So we'll see what's inside, right? Oh my gosh. And so this is a really small basket, but it actually looks like a decent collection. Um, if we go to the close up here, you'll see that we're looking at all of this white fuzz that's on this rice. That's what we're looking for, as well as there's not a whole lot of um, just like the wrong sorts of colors like pink or green or yellow. So this guy's looking good. That's really exciting because that was just the excess rice that wouldn't fit in the other basket. Um, I'm stoked about this because now that means we can move on to the next step, which is inoculating um, another substrate medium to kind of grow this collection out so that I have more of it to apply to the field. So basket number one looks good. <laughs> I was really scared I was going to open this and it was just going to be horrible. I mean, maybe when we get down into it, as we're looking at um, mixing it into the substrate, which I'm looking at using oats today, then it might be grosser, but on the top it looks good. So let's look at the other basket. Yay, that's exciting. I honestly thought I might open it and be like, well, we're going to have to try again, so tune in next week. So we'll get this other one and see if it did as well as the little basket. Again, I'm seeing some pretty solid looking leaf molds here on top, which is a good sign. Let's pull those guys back. Fingers crossed for no copperheads hiding. There's a few spiders. You're a funny looking spider. Okay. Oh man, it looks just as good as the other one. It's so exciting. Um, it's. I've been told that this generally takes a couple of tries, so seeing a uh, collection, this one's a little more pink than I might want it to be. We'll have to dig into it further. But like seeing a collection that has the fungal growth that I'm looking for, that has you know just all of this activity going on, um, God, that's just really exciting because that means I can move on. A few pill bugs in there eating some stuff, a few, what is that, maybe an earwig or something? I don't know. I'm wondering, I'm just wondering how much color is below. So we'll, we'll pull it apart and investigate. Um, but we're gonna mix this into a substrate now to grow it out further. There's a little more mold on the edge of this basket than I'd like, and I'm sure I'm gonna lose these baskets faster than I expect to just because of the heat and humidity and rain. But um, so far so good, I think. So, ah, it's so exciting. <laughs> Two fuzzy baskets. It's everything I wanted. <laughs> so I was walking back to the greenhouse with my collection baskets and I totally forgot a step in this process. Before we inoculate a pile of substrate with this um, culture that we've collected from the forest, these indigenous microorganisms, we first need to preserve them with an equal weight of brown sugar. So I think this is a good time to kind of pick through what's happening in here as well because we're going to be mixing it with brown sugar. You want to do this, if you're doing it, you want to do it within 15 minutes of collecting um, these or 15 minutes of taking the lids off just to really make sure that all of 
what you're trying to capture is in this mix because it'll start drying out and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to dump it out into here, into this bowl. You want a good size mixing bowl so you can fit all of the rice and the sugar. Let me just see what this bowl weighs first. Okay, so that's like in the two ounce range. And we can take a look and we'll see if we look at the bottom of this rice here. Um, you can see there's a few other colors in here that are not as desirable, but for the most part, we have a lot of good, um, good white and not a ton of like really bad grays, not a ton of oranges and stuff. You really want to keep the other colors. Ideally, you don't want any of them, but that's going to happen. I'm pretty sure that this happened to me this time because I left it out there for so many days. And so the next time that I do another collection, what I'll do is I will go ahead and pull it a couple days sooner or check for the heat a couple days sooner. Um, I have other friends in Texas who are doing this at the same time, so I knew once they were checking theirs that I was probably a little behind on it. But I think overall we're going to give this one a go. And so I'll just dump all of these guys in here. This one has a little more green. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure that um, it's necessarily going to be a failed one. Oh, well, there's a little extra orange in there. But we really just want to try and avoid like these sorts of colors, the oranges, the blacks, uh, the greens, because that means that it's you know well on its way to a different part of the decomposition cycle with maybe some molds and microbes that we don't necessarily want. But I see enough of this fluffy white looking um, mycelium or fuzz or mold or I'm not entirely sure what it's called but it does look a lot like mycelium and a lot of it does look like healthy growth so I'm just gonna keep it in here and then we'll go from there. Now this bowl is not gonna be big enough to mix in but that's okay because I have some bus tubs so I'm gonna grab one of those really fast and then we're gonna continue this process. Okay, got a bus tub and we're going to go ahead and I'm trying to decide if this is just way too much color in here. I feel like there's plenty of white to compete, but maybe I should pick out some of this orange. I don't know. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. They'll be like, oh, that culture was not good or yeah, it's fine. But I think that based on the way the top of it looked and the way that the inside of it looked and the ratio of you know the healthy white stuff that we're looking for versus um, this darker gray and really like these brighter colors. I think we're probably in a good place. So I'm going to weigh this guy out, which is going to be heavier than this scale can handle. Nope, just above. And so I'm looking at 950 grams of rice. So I'll dump it into here. And then I need an equal amount of brown sugar. And what the brown sugar is going to do is it's basically going to put the microbes into hibernation mode. And from there, we'll let it kind of settle um, in a jar for probably like three to seven days. Kind of keep an eye on it. I'm trying to see if I have enough grams of sugar. I think this is exactly the amount that I need. Just about. It may be a little short. We'll find out. Mm. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more sugar later, but we're going to start with this. It's right in the neighborhood of like 910 grams. So could actually pull maybe just a little bit of rice out. It's all an experiment, right? It's like, oh, I'm totally watching you fumble through this process. But I mean, that's part of it is like you're looking at it, you're problem solving, you're kind of trying to assess and decide, you know, is this going to be OK or is it not? I think that when there's really like egregious colors like this bright orange patch here. We're going to go ahead and pull that out because I'm trying to get rid of about 40 grams of rice now so that I have an even amount of sugar. I don't have to go inside and grab some more because we have a big storm on the way and I only want to run back and forth once. So I'd say this is probably, let's do this. I'll put this on this side. And let's see if this is in the neighborhood of 40. A little bit more, maybe this chunk. I'm not super concerned with the colorful stuff on this because there's so much white mycelium. I really think that I probably just let this, there we go. 
I probably just let this go a little too long, to be honest. So I'm hoping with the next collection that I'll get a lot more really nice white um, culture and kind of skip the orange and gray and brown and whatnot. But we'll see if it gets really gross. And so then what I'm going to do is just, this is a one to one mix. So it was 910 to 910. And I'm just going to work this brown sugar into the rice to stabilize the microbes, to kind of put them into hibernation, keep them well fed. And then they're just gonna chill for a week or less um, in a jar, which I'm going to pack two thirds full. And it seems that we pack with Korean natural farming, we pack a lot of things two thirds full. There's a reason for that. Uh, there's something to be said about the golden ratio. I don't know the exact reason, but feel free to explain it to me in the comments if um, you understand why we do everything in two thirds in KNF because I have no clue. But I'm all about, you know, ratios <laughs> that look good. And I understand it from like the gas exchange perspective. So we're just gonna go with it. Here comes the storm. It's definitely a good day to be inside working on projects <laughs> versus out in the fields with the hail and everything that we're expecting right now. So. Now this is pretty well mixed. You just kind of want to make sure, like with the other things that we'll be doing soon with the fermented plant juices and whatnot, that basically all of the exposed bits of rice or whatever material you're using are covered in sugar so that it can start slowing that process down a little faster. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if I had um, other cultures going on that looked better than this one, I might not use it. I'm going to see this through this first cycle just because the top of it looked good. But ideally, like I said, you'd want it to be mostly solid white, all solid white, maybe a little gray. Not so much on the bright colors like <laughs> orange and red. So we'll see how this one turns out. And then I'm going to get my jar. Oops. We're just going to pack this into the jar. And hopefully, it'll be a big enough jar. And so I just kind of load it in there and then pack it down as you go. Hey, tater. Are you scared of the hail? Is this so scary? Yeah. I agree. Ugh. I'll just pack this down. Try and push as much of the air out of it as possible. And make sure everything's coated in sugar. I'm looking to see, let's see, this is six, eight. So two, four, six would be uh, three quarters. Okay, so I think we can go to like right there. Like as close to a thousand. This will be a little too much for this jar, so I might need another jar. But you definitely want to make sure that you have that head space so that all of the gas exchange that happens can happen. Go a little more. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to let this sit, like I said, for three to seven days and kind of keep an eye on it. And then we're going to move on to the part where that's a lot of rain. <laughs> um, it's not going to stop. We're going to move on to the part where we use the liquid that is going to form as the brown sugar kind of melds with the rice and um, the microbes. And we're going to use that to inoculate the oats uh, early-ish in the next week or so. And that's pretty much it for this part of the process today. So we're going to stop it here uh, before the rain gets worse. But if you have any questions, 
please leave them in the comments below. As always, if you like what you see, um, you like this sort of tutorial, <laughs> hit the subscribe button, ding that bell, and follow me on Instagram at FlavorKit because lots of behind the scenes stuff is going on there. Um, I'm also including at the end of this video, there's a Patreon link if you're looking for more help, uh, more answers. Please feel free to check that out. And until next time, happy gardening. Okay, bye. Good Lord. <laughs>